Hey guys, welcome to episode number 476. Today is Wednesday, so it's DIY Wednesday, and I'm back out here with the off-grid solar aquaponics setup. I've made a little progress today. I also stalled out on a few projects, so I wanted to quickly walk through the updates and um, the sticky points. So, as we talked about last time, I needed to drill this barrel that has been done and right now we have a stand pipe in there i'm actually going to create the second bell siphon later tonight it will be identical to this bell siphon right here i'm super happy with the way this is operating it's been going for two or three days now and it hasn't failed me yet um the last time i talked about that little pc pump that was doing super well it's still doing really well as you can see we've got the flow now split between this barrel here and this barrel here and uh, it's got a good output it's got a really good output uh, for both of these barrels so i'm really happy with that i think one little pump is perfect to run two 55 gallon barrels just like this and i did mention that i wanted to run this on sunny days and cloudy days and it's been raining for the past two days and one thing that I noticed is after about 24 hours this pump did stop and I popped open the dry box and found that the battery was fairly low and obviously that's because it had been cloudy and rainy out for two solid days so um, you know as soon as the Sun came back out I, uh, I flipped the switch to my pump back on and the pump turned on. So I think the battery is fine. I don't think the solar controller allows the battery to go completely dead. And uh, it was able to charge back up once the sun came back out and uh, everything's been fine uh, ever since. However, uh, that creates a little bit of a problem because if it is cloudy out or rainy out for two or three days at a time, uh, these pumps will stall out and I could get root rot in the plants that I decide to plant in here. But uh, that can be solved by just adding a second battery to the dry box. So I think right now I'm just gonna go with one battery. But if I notice it happening quite a bit, uh, I might invest in a second battery to completely solve that problem. Uh, other things that I've been working on, I wanted to add a fish feeder to the lip of this barrel to allow the fish to automatically get fed. And again, I was gonna run that straight off of the battery, um, but this is probably a, a video for next week. I ran into one problem, which was uh, I didn't have a 12 volt to three volt uh, converter. So that's one part that I do need to order it's one of those things where you think you have everything, you start a project, and then you realize you're missing one thing. And since a Radio Shack went out of business, there's nowhere to get it quickly. So anyways, uh, I will have that done for next week, so stay tuned for that. I think that's gonna be a super fun little project, having a fish feeder running off of a solar panel. I think it's a pretty cool idea. And I get to reuse some of the parts and pieces from old projects from old videos so i think that will be fun as well now in terms of the media as i said last time i had the hydrogen the stuff is super expensive uh this bucket this barrel right here is enough to fill just one of these containers and it probably cost me 50 or 60 bucks just for this and uh so what i did was i went out and i actually got pea gravel from the hardware store for my second chop and flip barrel. And as you can see, this stuff is really dusty and uh, it's making a lot of muddy dirt water. So what I'm gonna have to do is rinse this really, really well before I throw this into my second barrel. But I'm interested to see if this is gonna work just as well as the hydrogen because it costs <laughs> a fraction 
of the price. It's probably like one one third of the cost of the hydrogen. So uh, if that works out, I think that'll be a great way to save some money. Uh, it doesn't really have any sharp edges to it, so I think it'll it'll work fine. Um, it is sort of a mix of different minerals and whatnot, stone chips. So, you know, it might be able to alter the pH of the water a little bit, but I'm not super concerned. Uh, the biggest thing I'm worried about is just getting, getting it rinsed really well before I put this uh, into the system because once it's in there and flooding and draining, if there's any residual mud, uh, it's just going to cloud the water forever and uh, it'll be impossible to get rid of. So I do have the goldfish to put in here. It has been cold out the last couple nights. So I'm gonna wait two or three more days until it starts to sort of permanently warm up here in order to bring those guys out. Hopefully by that time, I'll have the fish feeder installed out here. I'll have all of my media in the beds and I'll be able to start planting. Anyways, guys, it's getting kind of dark out. That's the update for this week on the Chop and Flip Aquaponics Solar System. Super excited about this project and I really can't wait to get fish and plants in this system. Uh, I'm thinking it's probably going to happen as soon as this weekend. So definitely stay tuned for more and I'll see you guys later.